Welcome to the Java programming series and today we will understand how to write down the program to print below patterns. So before we jump into the program, let's try to analyze the pattern. So here we have to print the five lines. So we know that whenever we want to print number of lines, we can use the for loop. So we need the one for loop. But you can see in the column, we have to print some dynamic number. So in the first row, we have a one number, right? In the second row, we have to print two numbers. In the third row, three numbers. In the fourth row, four numbers. In the fifth row, five numbers. Perfect. So we know that the first four loop we have to take that will go from one to five because we want the five lines. The inner for loop who is responsible for the column, we have to identify the logic to print this dynamic number. So in a previous video, we did the program to print this pattern. Right. And this is the logic for the same. So I can just utilize this logic to print this pattern first. So I can just paste here. And if I'll execute this program, it will print the pattern that is the five numbers and five lines. So currently it's printing the five numbers and five lines. So this for loop is responsible to print the number of line. And this for loop is responsible to print number of column or number of digit in each row. So you can see the outer for loop will remain same, right? Because we need the five lines here. In the inner for loop, where we are printing, we have to change something. So what we need, first we have to print one. So we are already starting j is equal to one. So we can print j first time. But when i is equal to one, we just have to execute this inner for loop only one time, right? In the first row, we have to execute this for loop only one time because we just have to print only one number. When i is equal to two, it's a second row. In the second row, we have to execute this for loop two times, right? Because we need the two numbers. When i is equal to three, it's a third row. We have to execute this for loop three times, right? So execution of this for loop will depends on i. Again, one more time. Execution of this for loop will depends on the value of i, right? So where we have to break this for loop, it actually depends on i. Now let's find out the logic for this for loop. So let's understand the relation between i and j. So we have a i and then we have a j. So first of all, when i is equal to one, that is the row number one. So how many times we have to execute the j loop in the row number one? So we just have to print one number. So we just have to execute one time. So when i is equal to one, we just have to execute this for loop only one time, right? Perfect. When i is equal to two, it's a row number two. And we have to execute this for loop two times. So what is the value of j? It, the threshold value, this condition should be two. When i is equal to three, we have to execute j for loop three times. So here we have to write down three when i is equal to three, right? When i is equal to four, we have to execute j for loop four times. And when i is equal to five, we have to execute j for loop five times. So you can see instead of five, we just have to use the i. So you can see what is, what is our desire? Our desire execution is this. And i is also going from one to five, right? So instead of five, we can just use the value of i. So I can just execute i time. So when i is equal to one, this for loop will get executed one time. When i is equal to five, this for loop will get executed five times. We have to execute this for loop i time. Okay. Let me just run this program and you will get the same pattern. And from the first step, you can understand we have to print the dynamic numbers, right? In the first row, one number, second row, two number, third row, three numbers. So number of digit in each row, it's dynamic. So based on that, we can understand we have to use some variable here so that we can change the value of variable each time and it will print the dynamic numbers. Let's try to understand the execution of the program. So here you can see we have a two variables, i, j and output. We will see what is the value of i, what is the value of j and what is the output. So first we are starting from one. I start from one. It will check one less than or equal to five. Yes, condition is true. It will go into the j for loop and we are starting j from one. So j will be one. It will check the condition j less than or equal to i. What is the value of i? It's a one. What is the value of j? It's a one. One 
less than or equal to 1 yes condition is true it will print the value of j second time it will do j plus plus so now j is 2 again it will check the condition 2 less than or equal to i what is the value of i 1 so 2 less than or equal to 1 condition is false and it will exit the j for loop and it will print the enter now my cursor is pointing here okay again it will do i plus plus so now i is equal to 2 it will check the condition 2 less than or equal to 5 condition is true yes then again it will start j from 1 so j will be started from 1 and it will check the condition 1 less than or equal to i what is the value of i 2 so 1 less than or equal to 2 yes condition is true it will print the value of j so it's a 1 sorry it will not print 1 here it will print the 1 here right because our cursor is pointing here okay perfect so it's printed 1 now again it will do j plus plus now j is 2 again it will check j which is 2 less than or equal to i which is again 2 i is also 2 right so 2 less than or equal to 2 condition is true yes it will print the value of j so again it will print j and it will do j plus plus now j is 3 okay and it will check 3 less than or equal to i i is 2 so 3 less than or equal to 2 condition is false so it will exit the j for loop and it will print the enter so my cursor is pointing here and it will do i plus plus so i is now 3 again it will check 3 less than or equal to 5 condition is true yes then it will execute this for loop 3 times i time right so it will be 1 2 and 3 okay again it will print enter so my cursor is here it will do i plus plus so i is now 4 it will check the condition 4 less than or equal to 5 yes condition is true it will execute this j for loop 4 times right it will print 1 2 3 and 4 perfect and it will exit the j for loop it will print the enter so my cursor is pointing here now it will do i plus plus so i is now 5 so 5 less than or equal to 5 condition is true yes it will execute this for loop 5 times so it's a 1 2 3 4 5 okay and it will print enter that means my cursor is pointing here now i plus plus so i is now 6 6 less than or equal to 5 no condition is false so it will exit the i for loop and finally your output will be the pattern that we required perfect so we have sold the program to print given pattern so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you have any comments regarding this video try to write down into the comment section thanks everyone and we'll see you into the next video